media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for ChartsAndMarkets.com. He's speaking to us from Vancouver. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah, good morning, Jim. And it's uh, here we are, Friday. And uh, it's been an interesting week in the market. Our uh, question this week comes from Michael. He says, hello, Jim and Bob. I live in Los Angeles County. However, since I am not vaccinated, I'm considered a domestic bioterrorist. As of today in the city of L.A., I will be deprived access to almost all inside and outdoor public places and businesses except for essential services like grocery stores and medical facilities. Bob, is this indicative of a blow-off top in intrusive government? Also, will this COVID hysteria continue to be positive for the markets? Wow, good one. I think that uh, I'm surprised that the this authoritarian uh, rage continues. Uh, but uh, I'm going to put it this way, Jim, that both the financial markets and the political markets are absolutely wild. And uh, that was the case at the huge commodity boom in 1920 when all the commodities around the world were going straight up. And you had the uh, U.S. government uh, nationalizing railroads, and you had the Bolsheviks in Russia creating the Soviet nightmare. And but they backed off. The um, in Russia they changed from uh, pure communism to some kind of a BS socialism. And in the United States, all of a sudden, oh well, we can't buy railroads anymore. We'll sell them. So. The point is that when things are this crazy in the financial markets, it's ending action. And when these things, the, the action in the political arena is so crazy that this is uh, ending action as well. I, it's strange to explain it, but I think when the market starts to deflate, the ambition of the left will start to deflate as well and there's sort of an elusive thing in here whereby in a bull market uh, everybody gets busy but what people look at is the symptom of this busyness which is the stock prices going up but everybody gets busy and then in a bear market let's put it this way everybody gets unbusy so it's a good question and um yeah it is an ending action of in of both the financial markets and the political markets and i don't know that the covid hysteria has been a positive for the market it was uh, when they came in with the lockdowns that was uh, quite unsettling but the way it looks easier to look at over your shoulder of course is it turns out that 2021 was going to be the year where a great bubble completed, possibly like in the middle of the year, a mid-year, or as we've been noting with the probable upthrust into September for New York, which we could be getting. So the uh, the the Wuhan flu lockdown caused great deal of damage to all kinds of people and businesses and everything else but the power of the great bubble was such that it came back to life again and in incredible power uh, could be setting uh, the highs the excesses that one would get with the highs so 
Now, what we're also seeing, Jim and Michael, is that the uh, the positive things that accompanied the bu- bubble this year have been uh, rising industrial commodity prices. That may have ended. The other has been narrowing credit spreads, and that has reversed. The uh, dollar index is stabilizing, and it could break out. So, yeah, I think... Uh, the uh, end of September is going to be very interesting in the market, and thanks for the question, Mike. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, some of the headlines that caught your eye today. Uh, the first one, U.S. consumer credit grows at record rate in June. They're polishing uh, up the credit cards again. <laughs> Extending them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. We've just got to buy everything in sight and use leverage money uh, for it. And uh, 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 definitely a boom headline. Now, we have record low interest rates continuing, yet credit cards get away with charging 18 27%. Why is that, Bob? Oh, the carry trade there is amazing. Oh, I, I can't believe it. Uh, they've got, uh, I don't know, I haven't looked at it closely in ages, but the spreads are amazing, and uh, why it doesn't get more competitive and bring them down, I don't know. It's beyond my scope at the moment, but uh, the main thing is uh, maxing out on leverage at the brokerage firms, maxing out on the credit cards, and that sort of thing, so, yep. And leverage uh, in the stock market's at a, a record high. What happens if we hit a recession or the market makes a major correction? Yeah, of course, it's typical that the New York Stock Exchange calculation of, mar- net, of, margin, of margin debt is way up there, and... Uh, it's it's hard to uh, th- this one is uh, kind of a strange leading indicator and whatnot like that. Uh, we just look at it, but it you can't get us really get it helps on sometimes. But all you can say now is it's let's call it at the moon kind of thing. And naturally, with a contraction, a credit contraction, and declining stock prices, uh, this would. Uh, Margin comes in real fast. But one of the things I should mention, Jim, is that the the uh, breadth of the stock market is important. And in a really dynamic bull market, every all sectors and all stocks are going up, and that's kept track of with the advanced decline line. Comparison between stocks that are advancing and stocks that are declining. And now this made a triple top about six or seven weeks ago, and then good correction. And then in the last week or so, coming up to kind of test that high. So this is the, uh, this is uh, an important uh, setback in the AD line, worth watching. And if it doesn't go to new highs, uh, this then is becomes a warning. The other one, Jim, is the old... Uh, Dow Jones theory whereby where the Dow industrials can make a high but if it's not confirmed by the transports then it becomes a potentially a precarious high and where the Dow has been making highs now the transports have not 
been making new highs. So it's another one that's worth watching. Uh, so uh, I think I'm happy with our work for this year. Uh, tremendous speculation out to around mid-year. Possibly uh, an upthrust into September, which we seem to be getting. But the uh, key items, industrial commodities, uh, credit spreads, and are no longer participating, no longer supportive of the bull market. So we'll just watch and see what happens. Because also, uh, if there's going to be a credit crisis discovered, it's they are often discovered in the fall. So and here we are. The markets are already beginning to change. Credit spreads are starting to widen. Uh, all the noise coming out of China. Part of it is. To me, it seems to be that their markets are starting to fail. And then with the Chinese authorities condemning one sector or not, education, stocks, or whatever, they're trying to look like they're in charge of, of possibly a building contraction. So, uh, yeah, and then earlier in the year, in March, you had uh, liquidity problems discovered in South Africa, Turkey, and Argentina liquidity problems now being discovered in China, me who knows maybe India, but then the path of these in the path past <laughs> has been that it typically whacks the senior uh exchanges such as London or New York in the fall. So Jim there's a lot of stuff on path for a problem to be discovered in the fall. Headline, reflation trade losses pile up for hedge funds. Yeah, they were all on on the, uh, yep, all the Fed lollies going to go into inflation items and stock inflation and commodity inflation, and they all got leveraged up on it, and it ain't working for them. So uh, that's that's another kind of anecdotal point uh, that things are changing. Headline, UN sounds deafening warning on climate change. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, these guys dragging out the same old story about climate, uh, global warming, and then they came out with climate change so that no matter what you do, you're going to get blamed for it. But uh, I'm an old-time geophysicist and have had uh, studies in climate going way back and have maintained uh, interest in it. And uh, indeed, what has been happening is that since the 1990s, uh, the solar activity has been reducing. There were two solar physicists then, Penn and Livingston, who, uh, with their work, determined that the solar maximum was completing and would be followed by a quiet sun. And with the quiet sun, you get cooling. And uh, so what we look at on reliable uh, temperature records, the uh, the main warming over the last 20 years has been two El Ninos, the one in 1998 and then the one in 2015, 2016. And those highs are... Uh, there, but the current temperature has come down such that you've got a flat line trend now of about six years long. And my guess is that it'll continue. Uh, but nonetheless, you've got these authoritarians are using two items of fear to control people. One is that the world is going to fry unless you give us more taxes and uh, suffer more regulations. And the other is that unless you wear a mask, the uh, Wuhan flu is going to get you. And we, So it, I'm, I'm telling you, in, in hundreds of years, in what was otherwise a law and order republic, there has never been such an attempt by control freaks to control everything. And with this taste they've had in lockdowns with COVID, uh, there's no wonder that they're coming up with variant strains and deltas and all this sort of stuff. 
And at some point, Jim, you're going to get to where the public may become immune to fear. That's possible. They may become exhausted by every fear that the government comes out with, uh, in, you know, every quarter, so to speak. And then, of course, this was a regularly scheduled uh, get-together for all the climate freaks, and uh, that's, I think, for uh, early December or something like that. But they're, they're cranking up all of the uh, hype on it now, and... Uh, uh, I'm just fascinating to see how far these guys go. It's amazing. And what is going to be more interesting is when the public says, enough, out of here, you guys don't know what you're talking about. So, because their forecast models for temperature, average temperature, are three to four degrees above what is actually happening. And they've had these temperature forecasts by models for 30 years now, and for 30 years they've been too high. So somewhere there's going to be uh, a, a resolution to this absurdity, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. 600 million in cryptocurrency stolen by a hack. I read a bit of a story, uh, the crook apparently returned something like 240 million of it, he said he was trying to teach people a lesson. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, uh, some crypto system was suddenly uh, out of uh, 600 million of those suckers, whatever they were, just gone in an instant. So it, it, the crypto side does allow itself uh, to uh, uh, crooks who have certain skills. Uh, you never know. They may be even backed by certain socialist governments you know anything's possible in today's world but anyways we're going to watch for further signs uh that the financial markets are on the path to another contraction come the fall chinese bond swings threaten global hedge fund investors yeah, that's part of the problems coming radiating out of China. There's some of their their bond uh, junk bond things have been hit pretty hard, and uh, you don't get to see prices on them. They're just sort of like a headline about this is what's going on. And we have found that when you have problems in outlying countries, like problem meaning a, a credit crisis, that it inevitably will run into the fall and be discovered in the senior economies. Now, this is an old one, and I love telling the story, Jim, is that 2,000 years ago, the Roman writer, Cicero, who was a very brilliant guy, he pointed out that when there was a financial problem in the eastern provinces, meaning the other end of the Mediterranean, Phoenicia, I guess they might have called it then, but if there was a financial crisis in their money markets there, it would inevitably hit the main money market in Rome, and this has been the case ever since. That, uh, it, But it takes to be, you need to be in a great financial mania for it to become vulnerable. And then, as I said, that in March, there were announcements of problems in South Africa, Argentina, and Turkey. And I think what we're hearing out of China is an ongoing credit problem that could soon encompass India and then hit New York and be discovered in October sometime. So it's going to be fascinating to watch. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Jim, good to be with you and look forward to our get-together next week. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. If you have any questions for Bob, we'll gladly answer them. Send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time.
Available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.